there anything else in the body that will stop inflammation besides cortisone? No, there are no others. Now I'm convinced that the cortisone pulse must be the gate between short-term inflammation and long-term inflammation. The gate must be broken in Helen's body. With the broken gate, the short-term inflammation would last too long and cause Helen to have a serious problem. I asked the endocrinologist, is it possible that the cortisone pulse would weaken in Helen's body? Sure. That happens with other hormones like thyroid ones. Well, if that is the case, solving Helen's arthritis is easy. We must replace the missing with cortisone tablets. I go to Dr. J.J. Fickner, a former student of mine, who is at the time the Division Chief of Rheumatology of the University of North Dakota School of Medicine. After explaining these ideas, I request Dr. Fickner to give Helen sufficient cortisone to make her pain-free in a week or so. He replied, I can do that. We do it all the time. But let me stop you right here. I am not going to give Helen cortisone long term. She will get the side effects. Can't do it safely. That's not the plan, I tell Dr. Fickner. When her body gets the cortisone you give, it'll close all the doors on the blood vessels. They won't leak anymore. The swelling stops. No more blood plasma can escape from the blood. The extra plasma that is already in the swelling disappears down the sewer system of the body. Swelling with its inflammation war is gone, done, finished. Your interpretation is consistent with the results. However, that doesn't prove you're correct. I'll reply. I said, okay, the point is once the doors on the blood vessels are closed, the pipes don't leak anymore. These doors won't spring open if you quit giving cortisone to Helen. How do you know that? Well, think about it. If the doors on the blood vessels were spring-loaded, I would have arthritis. You would. We all would. We would have leaking blood vessels all over our bodies and be as bad a shape as Helen if the doors were spring-loaded. No, once the blood vessel doors are closed and the pipes are not leaking, Helen should be able to go a day, a week, or a month before injury, allergy, infection, or stress opens the doors. Once open, her body can't handle it, that we know. Give Helen enough cortisone tablets to make her pain-free. Then no more, cold turkey. When she finds the arthritis returning, say in a finger, teach her to take some cortisone tablets to stop it before it spreads. When Helen says that is arthritis returning in her finger, let's believe her. Dr. Fickner, is it not true that a small amount of cortisone stops a small amount of inflammation. Yes. Then Helen won't need much to stop the finger pain if she treats it early. Teach her how much to take to stop the finger flare. Make the proper amount of cortisone tablets available to her. Trust her to follow your instructions. The flare will stop in a day or so. Then suppose Helen gets another flare later someplace, say a hip. Have her control it the same way. Using this technique, Helen has been pain-free with no morning stiffness and unearned evening tiredness since 1984 without cortisone side effects. Helen's problem was solved. The scientific world would not be convinced with one case. We surgically operated on the brains of rats so that they could not make the cortisone pulse. They became arthritic as we predicted. Proof number one. We found rats with arthritis. I instructed students to use the Helen plan on rats with arthritis. Give them just enough cortisone to make them run around the cages like normal rats. Then stop the cortisone. Watch them. When they just become slow, stiff, and sore, give them a little cortisone to make them run around their cages like normal. 
then stop the cortisone again. In this way, the students got so good that the arthritic rats appeared normal, like all the other rats in the laboratory. Proof number two. At our national meetings, we argue and discuss with each other about how things work. The folks at the National Institutes of Health said, all right, we have the Lewis strain of rats that always develops arthritis after birth, a genetic thing, you know. If you're right, Stenberg, these rats were born without the cortisone pulse. They looked, and it was so. Proof number three. The surgeons in London said, we thought all people had the cortisone pulse after surgery. We didn't think about those with arthritis. Let's separate them out from the rest. And if you're right, Stenberg, those with arthritis should not have the cortisone pulse after surgery, whereas those without arthritis should. They looked, and it was so. Proof number four. Then Dr. Fickner said, enough. Let us try the Helen plan on a group of people with arthritis. We did. They became virtually pain-free. Proof number five. The great physician instructs, visit Slocum and Polly. This is Slocum and Polly as they were in 1995. They were two of the Mayo Clinic Nobel Prize winning team of four. The other two had passed on. I had read all of their medical articles. I had one burning question, the answer to which is why you're hurting today. Dr. Slocum, how come you gave Gladys cortisone every day? We didn't know how to use it, he replied. Did you get the cortisone side effects in Gladys? Yes. Dr. Slocum, we solved the cortisone side effect problem. He said, you did? How'd you do it? I told him what I've been telling you, using more $25 words. Then I said it boils down to this. Teach people to take cortisone on the bad days and not on the good days, and they will use so little cortisone that they never get the side effects. You, Polly, and Ward defined and published the safe limit of cortisone use. That was an excellent study. Interesting. So that's how it works. Then Dr. Slocum raised his 95-year-old voice and said with determination, Dr. Stenberg, physicians do not understand how to use cortisone. Stick to your guns. Surprised, I thought, wow. In 1948, he said he didn't know how to use cortisone. Now, 50 years later, he's saying they don't know how to use cortisone. What do you mean, Dr. Slocum, stick to your guns? Well, we published our articles. Cortisone became available. Physicians used it, got wonderful results, got the side effects, blamed us, and we didn't defend cortisone. There are two women important to you, Gladys and Helen. These two represent two ways of using cortisone. Both ways will make you free of aches, pains, tiredness, and stiffness. One gives side effects, the other not. Come back with me to 1948 into the room at the Mayo Clinic where Gladys lies bedridden with arthritis. Dr. Slocum holds a syringe containing cortisone. A brilliant man pledged to do no harm. He put too little cortisone in the syringe for fear that he will harm Gladys. He injects Gladys. Gladys, who tells like it is, says nothing happened. Dr. Slocum doubles the dosage and injects Gladys. Gladys states nothing happened, and Dr. Slocum triples the dosage. Now there is sufficient cortisone in Gladys's body to stop the leaky vessels and halt all inflammation. Dr. Slocum checks. Gladys exclaims, Dr. Slocum, I don't know what you put into that last syringe. My shoulders are loosening up and I don't hurt as much. Dr. Slocum thinks, well, the double dose cortisone didn't work, the triple dose worked. I could refine the dosage 